Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all my viewers here in Vermont, in the United States, and around the world. I want to welcome you to the Hesaba House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you every Sunday. And if you're joining me for the very first time, I pray that you'll be blessed and welcome to the Hesaba House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. It is a bilingual ministry, and I pray that you'll be blessed by the word that God has for you today, this day. And not only today, but let it be a blessing for the rest of your life. Bienvenidos a todos. Bienvenidos a este culto de las promesas de Dios. Mi nombre es Pastora Jamora Guadalupe. Este ministerio viene de las promesas de Dios. Yo oro que sea bendecido con la palabra que el Señor tiene para ti en este día. Antes de la, y para oración, vamos para el libro del Salmo, capítulo 138. Before we go into prayer, let's go to the book of Psalm 138. 138. And the word reads, from King David, the second king of Israel, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have exhausted in your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I call you, answer me. You, you greatly embalm me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing on the way of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is a source, he looks kindly on the lowly. Through lovely he sees them from afar. Then I walk in the midst of trouble. You preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the, the anger of my foe. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. Let me see, just continue. In the name of Jesus Christ, from verse one to eight. The book of Psalm 138. Let's go to prayer. Blessed Holy One, in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, thank you for this holy day that you have hallowed, that your people come before you and give you with thanksgiving and blessing. Glorify yourself that the Lord Jesus Christ, you gave your life for your church, your people. Thank you. Let the words that I say, let it be for the edification for your kingdom. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen and amen. For the glory of God, in Jesus' name, amen. A wonderful day. You know why it's wonderful? Because you are here. It is wonderful. There's a lot that is happening around the world, but we take this moment and we focus on what God has for you, the word that God has for you this day. We continue to pray for those who are going through war, Ukraine and Russia. We pray for North Korea. We pray for China, Taiwan. We pray for Latin American countries in the United States and all the European countries. A lot that is happening, people are suffering from fire earthquake, flood, devastation, people are being killed, people are dying from diseases, there's famines, there's a water shortage. There's a lot that is happening around the world. It's not only one area, it all affects each and every one of us. So beloved, let's take this moment and we pray for those who are going through so much that they are suffering. Oh, yes. We pray for the first responders. We pray for those who are rescuing people that have been devastated by mudslide, like in the Philippines. 
And all the countries that our volcanoes are erupting and eating up their homes. We pray for those who are rescuing those who are trapped. We pray that there will be a peaceful resolution. We pray that we don't continue to harm each other. We uplift these prayers to the Lord, to the God Almighty. We give him thanksgiving and blessing and honor that belongs to him because everything belongs to God. But before we go into the scriptures, let me remind each and every one of my viewers, I want to say thank you for many of you who are tuned in to this ministry. I continue to pray for you, even though that you don't know me, but I continue to pray for you and your household and in your country, that all things will be according to God's will. And many of you are suffering from this war, famine, loss of home, loss of family. I continue to pray for you. So but I, I want to say welcome to the new subscriber that subscribes to my channel, to this ministry every week, every single week. I want to say thank you for doing so. And I continue to pray that you'll be a blessing, not only that you receive the word, but that you will bless other people too. Let them know about this ministry. Let me know from where you're from. Yes, let me know from what country you are viewing this ministry. And I continue to pray for you and your family. God bless you. So let's go to, let's go to the book of Samuel. First Samuel. Chapter 8, verse 4 to 20, and then from 11 to uh, 11, chapter 11 to 14 and 15. Vamos para el primero de Samuel, capítulo 8, versículo 4 hasta 20, y capítulo 11 hasta 14 hasta 15. Pero yo no voy a leer toda la escritura. I'm not going to read to you the whole chapter. But what I'm going to read to you is for the book of Samuel chapter 8. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his son as Israel leaders. The name of the firstborn was Joel. And then the name of the second was Abiyah. And they served at Bethsaida. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after this honest gain and accepted bribe and pervert the justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and they came to Samuel at Ramana. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said what they said, they gave us a king. But when, excuse me, but when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all the people are saying to you, it is not you that they have rejected, for they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day that I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are going, to, they are doing to you what they're doing to you. Now listen to them, but, but warn them solidly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his right. May the Lord add a blessings to this reading. Let's pray. Holy God, in the name of Jesus Christ, let our reading that I speak, let it be from the Holy Spirit that you have endowed in your servant. Speak to your people, open their eyes and their ears and their hearts and understanding 
to know the difference between right and wrong, that they will hear your words. Glorify yourself in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' precious name. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Vamos a orar la, la oración que Jesús, Señor, su discípulo. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week I spoke about Eli. The book of Samuel, I spoke to you, and I will add that from the book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, and then verse 11 to 12, 20. This week is how God wants each and every one of us to understand the difference between believing in God and depending upon God. There is a big difference between believing in God and depending upon God. What is happening right here? Samuel here is getting old. As you have read in chapter three, have you have read? I hope that you have. Eli raised Samuel from the very beginnings, from a very young age. Samuel became the last king, the last, excuse me, the last judge for Israel. He was a judge, a prophet, and a leader for Israel. But here, here Samuel was getting old. And he had two sons. He had two sons and they were ministering in a different providence. And Bethsaida. But the people was displeased with their two sons because they knew how Samuel had been from the day that he was brought up to minister for the people of God. And the people says, no, 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 no. Samuel is getting old, but who's going to lead us as leaders? Oh, yes. Who's going to lead us when we get in trouble, when we need a judge, when there's a dispute? What's going to happen to us? Oh, yes. And they make the comparison. So wait a minute. Samuel's going to die soon. These two hooligans, his two sons, they, they, they pervert justice. Oh, yes. So they ask for a king, just like everybody else, the surrounding nations. Oh, yes. Just like the surrounding nation, they want to be like everybody else. And that displeased Samuel. Not that, they dis that he displeased their requests about the two sons, what they were doing, but they requested a king, just like every other nation. So Samuel went to the father, Jehovah God, that Jehovah God is a king, that he was giving direction to Samuel. And Jehovah God says, don't worry about it. They didn't do that to you. They did it to me. They don't want, the, they don't want me to be their king. And Jehovah God gave Samuel instruction. As you continue to read from the Hebrew text, 1 Samuel chapter 8 and on. But Jehovah God gave instruction to Samuel to give to the people. I want you to understand there is a difference between believing in God and depending upon God. A child, when a child is born, they completely depend upon their parents. A baby and a child, 
the food, the shelter, the comfort, the compassion, the touching, holy touching, providing for their needs. They get in trouble. The parents are there to help them out. They get hurt physically. The parents is there to help them out. As the child grows older, the parents teach the child how to survive in the world so they could become good leaders for people around them and for the world. What is happening today, beloved? You cannot, we cannot incorporate the things of the world that is corrupt into the things of God. And that's what is happening around the world. Oh, many of you say, I believe, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. But are you depending upon God to help you to make good judgment? God is the judge of all the judge. Jesus is the judge of all the judges. He's the Lord of all the laws. But people want to incorporate the things of the world into the things of God. You can't do that. Here is a great example that God says, okay, Jehovah says, okay, tell the people this is what is going to happen to them. You cannot. You have to depend. Let me give you another example. In the book of Psalms, you just finished reading. I just read to you the book of Psalms 138. This is the second king of Israel. He acknowledged, he believed in Jehovah. But he knew Jehovah. He depended upon Jehovah. Oh, yes. David depended upon Jehovah. Before he became king, he was a scrabbly little red, you know, ruby red young man to attending to the sheep. All smelly, just like the sheep out in the field. But he understood who was Jehovah. He knew and he relied on Jehovah. And as you read about David, oh, David did some crazy things. Oh, yes. But he knew Jehovah. When he was out in the field tending all those flocks, he depended upon Jehovah. He knew when the army came against the Israelites, he killed the big giant, Goliath. See, he, depend, he depended upon little rocks, little rocks. He didn't have no rifles. No, he didn't have no shield. They tried to put a shield over on him to protect him. He took that off. He took it off because he relied on Jehovah. He depended upon Jehovah to kill that giant that was insulting the army of God. Without just a couple of little rocks and a slingshot. But when we abandoned the water of life, we are abandoning God. Oh, you might say, I believe in God. Oh, yes. Even the devil believes in God. I believe in Jesus. Even the devil believes in Jesus Christ, knows that he's the son of God. He tempted Jesus Christ. If you're the son of God, throw yourself off this cliff. God will command the angels to lift you up so you will not hit your head. Oh, Satan knows that. He believes. When we abandon the principle of God to be the judge and we rely on him to everything, one thing I have to tell you, and I share this with you, I come from a very large family. And one thing is, people couldn't understand how my family was doing well. Oh, no, they were not in, in gov on government assistance program. No, 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 no. My father took care of his own. He worked out there. He worked very hard. But my mother knew where her blessings were coming from. People were shocked. How well she was doing with her family. People were shocked. 
and we dressed very well, clean. We didn't have much, but it was clean and iron and neat. She knew where her blessings were coming from. There is a difference between believing in God. And there's a difference between depending upon God. We depend upon water, that God provides us water. We rely on the sun, that God provides the sun. We rely on the beautiful during the springtime when the flowers start to emerge. And the shades of the tree when the hot weather comes, we relied on those things. We depend upon them. Can you imagine if God says, forget it. I'm not going to sun give the sunshine. I'm not going to give these bratty generations any water. Can you imagine? But there's a difference between believing in God and depended upon God. So they did not reject Samuel. They rejected God. They rejected God to provide for them safety, give good judgment, because he's a judge of judgments. He created us. Many of you have traveled, especially in the United States and other countries, have seen the glory and the beauty of God, even David talks about this in the book of 135, 138. I just read that to you. I mean, his love, his, he pour out his heart for us. He has given us all that we need. But instead, oh, you believe in God? Yes. So does the devil believe in God. You believe in Jesus? So does the devil believe in Jesus. But are you dependent upon God? For all your needs? Have you abandoned God? You know, oh, and I have to use this as an example. I remember when I first started in ministry and I was in seminary at that time. And the church that I was attending, the church, one of the church leaders says to me, we choose the people we want, something like that. I can't remember verbatim, but she said to me, one of the church leaders, we choose right there and then. They believe in God, but they don't depend upon God to do the ministry work of Jesus Christ. When this individual leader told me that they choose the one, and I believe, yeah, I was a deacon at that time at the church. And they tell me, this leader tells me that it's up to them. Right there, I knew that they believe in God. Oh, yeah, they believe in Jesus Christ, but they did not depend upon the spirit of God to guide the church. And there's a difference between, and this is why some of us are suffering because people are not being trained to rely on God. Let me give you another scenario. Here in the United States, and the state that I live, there is a famine in believing and depending upon God. Oh, yes. And then they wonder why people don't come to church. Because people see that they read the, the scripture, they read the word of God, what God expects from us. And they violate that. And people say, no, nah, I don't want no part of that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't want no part of that. So they go out into the world and the world abused them. This is why Jesus talks about the lost sheep. He talks about the lost sheep. You have abandoned. You close the doors. And don't let others come in. But you rely on another human being. Jesus talks about in the gospel. When his mother, his brother came looking for him, that Jesus Christ himself, that he came to show us the way of God. He did all these miracles before them. And Jesus and still the people did not believe. They enjoyed the miracles, but they did not believe in the power of God. They did not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and depended upon it too. So this church leader that told me, we decide who, who they want for the church, but they were rejecting the Holy Spirit that come from God. It's the same thing that the Israelites did to Samuel. They rejected Jehovah. And Jehovah God came, listen to them. I'm going to give them what they want. And it's never the best. Saul did wonderful things. This first king, he did wonderful things, but he rebelled against God. But it was not the best that God wanted for his people. We are doing the same, same thing and we wonder why we're not bearing fruit. Because you believe but you don't depend upon him. There is a big difference. Other people that I have met from different parts of the world, they have such a dependent upon God and they say, and they go crazy. And when they praise Jesus, you can tell the spirit of God is with them. But here in the United States, people want to force you to read the Bible. People want to force you to believe. But look at the behavior. We have leaders that are taken from you, acting and speaking to you very smooth, up like smooth words, like it's like butter and honey. But they don't have the best interest for you. They demand that you change your ways. But then again, they murder each other. And they are racist. Oh, yes. Racist. Is this is what Jesus died for on the cross for the whole humanity? Jesus makes it perfectly clear that many of us, when he comes, they're going to say, Jesus, I fixed the, 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 the justice. I appointed judges for the Supreme Court that try to go according to your way. But Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. While children are being murdered with rifles and guns in school. And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. You walk around with flags of Jesus and saying Jesus and Jesus that. Satan does the same thing too. He disguised himself as an angel of light. So the question is, you believe? That's a good thing. Do you depend upon God? That is the question. And not only that, understand and know who God is. The breath that you're breathing right now is the breath of a holy God. The children that God has given you. As a matter of fact, in the United States next week, we're going to be celebrating Father's Day. Fathers, how many seeds of children do you got around the world? And scatter your seeds around. We will be held responsible for that. Our job is to teach our children to love God with all our hearts and soul. And not rely on our own, our own understanding. Likewise, love your neighbors. And what is happening with our youth, they're completely confused. They're committing suicide. They have mental problems. They don't even know where to turn to because they, the parents have abandoned the basic fundamental to show our children that they are loved by God and because they are loved by God, we love them and to teach them. Now, if the child rebels, I mean, here is two children of a godly man. They were not walking in the path of God and it's not because Samuel neglected them, no. Samuel gave them the responsibility that it was promised from the people when they came out of Egypt that they will be serving Jehovah for the rest of their lives. It's a privilege to be in front of Jehovah. So my question to you today is, 
Are you dependent upon God and understand that God is the one that is still in control in spite of what's going on in the world? Are we giving him the glory? Are we giving him thanksgiving and blessing and thanking him for the water that we drink, the water that we drink, the water that we bathe, the food that we get? Even if you're homeless, you're able to get some food. Even if you're cold without clothing, you're still able to get some clothing. Oh, yes. If you're sick and they rush you to the hospital, if you don't have no money, the hospital has an obligation to take care of you. Oh, yes. That comes from God. Now, if they neglect you and abuse you, then they're going to have to answer to God. Oh, yes. We relied on the water, the living water that Jesus talks about, the living water. He says, take my yoke, which is light, and it's not burdensome. Come to him. He says, come to him. So my question is, do you want to depend upon God? He's waiting for you. He made you, and he loves you. Come to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I believe, but I don't understand. I want to learn to depend upon you. Forgive me for my sins. Teach me your way. Be my Lord and Savior. As soon as you say that Jesus is right there, he's been waiting for you. This is the God that I talk about every week. So do you believe? That's a good start. Do you depend upon him fully for everything? He'll guide your way. He defends. He'll be your defender. This is why Jesus says, don't worry. When they bring you in the court, don't worry what to say. The Holy Spirit will provide that for you. This is why Jehovah says that we have to live by faith. Jesus Christ talks about living by faith because we live in a pervert generation, a lying uh, generation, a murderous generation that believing by faith is the key to everything in believing in Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. Every word that he said in the scripture, I never will leave you. I will never forsake you. I, he's going to help you through difficult times. Does not mean that everything is going to be hunky dory. No, he will provide a way. He's waiting for you. Oh yes, to depend upon him. He's a parent. Jehovah God is a parent. Our Lord Jesus Christ is here for us. Jesus always said, I come to do my father's will. He never says, I came to do my will. He came to do his father's will. Now, enough is enough. You're not in control. Let Jesus guide your path. Let Jesus guide the ministry that Jesus died for, for his people. Let's pray. Holy God, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you glorify yourself. Blessing and honor goes to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, protect them. And those who had just believed in you, Jesus, comfort them, show them, sanctify them. Show them the way, give them understanding in your words. Help them to find a church where they could grow. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I praise your people around the world and here in the state of Vermont into your hands. Amen and amen and amen. Hasta la semana que viene, que sea bendecido en nombre de Jesús. Amen. Until next week, may the peace of Jesus be with you. Amen.